Hi everyone, welcome to the Builder Track. I am Muskan Mangla. I volunteer in the OWAS community. I'll be moderating this session. During the next 45 minutes, you'll be listening to Jaron and Ben present OWAS Strong Secrets. We have a secret for everyone. Please submit any questions you have during the session in the QA tab, just to the right of this video in the Huawa platform. I'll be asking the speakers your questions in the last 10 minutes of the session. Please note that the chat function is disabled for the attendees, but you can leave comments and chat using the chat tab in the Huawa. So, well, I'll introduce the speakers briefly. Jaron is a typical security jack of all trades as a hands-on security architect with a knack for aut automation and risk management. Jaron has been involved in the various OWAS projects, now focusing on OWAS uh, wrong secrets. Ben is a freelance security consultant and engineer. Ben's speciali speciali specialities are architecting and implementing cloud security and building secure CI CD environments in agile, DevOps, and SRE cultures. Now, handing over to you, uh, Jaron and Ben. Uh, Forgive me if I pronounce your names uh, wrong. So yeah, over to you guys. You did awesome. Thank you so much for introducing us. Let's start sharing some screens. See the technologies with us. All right, all right, all right. I think you can see it now. So welcome everybody um, to Oval Strong Secrets. Um, we hope to uh, entertain you a little bit with our project in the upcoming 45 to 60 minutes. Um, and with this content, I think we can be very short about, um, about our introduction for ourselves. Um, so I'm Joan <laughs> and here right next to me is... Uh... Yeah, Ben. Uh, so we're both project on this project, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let's move ahead. So we have more time for awesome content. So um, let's start with a little poll. Uh, this side of the screen, at least for me, I hope it's also for you on the right hand side of the screen. There is this beautiful uh, poll uh, where you can fill in uh, where you find secrets within the project you had access to. Um, and well, I can't access it on my computer and show it live because then we'll get the funny audio look back. But right now. I'll refresh it again. I see about 34 responses, answers right over here. Um, let's see if I can show it like that. Okay, this is a bit funny. I don't think that works very well. Um, but basically what we can tell is that uh, a lot of people found secrets in Git. Um, uh, a lot of people found secrets in NFARS, in secret managers, in cloud vendor solutions, but also in the CI CD pipeline. And a few of them found them in Docker containers, in libraries, executables, or in workload schedulers. All right, awesome. Well, with that information, I think we all touched stuff a little bit. Let's get ready to do stuff. So um, the first question, of course, would then be if we go to this poll is, hey, 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 but um, what are secrets? What can be a secret? So here's a few examples of possible secrets, right? Can, there can be plenty, of course. Um, you can think of uh, uh, various things like uh, 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 um, your password, which makes total sense, private keys, uh, whether for TLS configuration or GPG, um, IAM access keys for your cloud vendor, um, um, but then, of course, also API keys or um, uh, a little bit less easy OTP seats. Um, MFA backup codes, uh, 2FA codes for as long as they're valid, uh, the QR codes to sign on easily and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, that it starts to grow and grow and grow. So apparently there's quite a few secrets out there. So um, then the next question would of course be, um, um, if you had to rotate all your organization secrets, would you actually know where they are? Um, and not, not, not just what, you know, what will your team lead decided that this should be or where your CISO decided this should be or your lead architect or whoever rocks your boat in your organization, but also where everybody else eventually put those secrets, which might be in different places, basically. Um, and do you actually know their purpose? Remember how um, uh, Jack from the other unit basically just um, uh, committed this password thing? Do you actually know where this is for? Um, um, more importantly, um, can you rotate it timely when you're compromised? So if you know where all your secrets are, can you then rotate it? And do you actually know, well, lots of other things about your secrets, who lost touch them, stuff like that. So for this, it's again time for a little poll. Again, 
At the right hand side of your screen, there is a second poll which asks you, do you know the location of all the secrets in your organization? So this poll has been on for quite a while and we have quite a few responses from what I can tell as well. Um, Oh, it's still growing. Pretty cool. So let's jump in at 30 responses. Five people said that they know the location of all the secrets in their organization. I'm very impressed by them because I've never worked in an organization where I knew all the secrets or where, where all the secrets were located because there were always too many people trying to be fit quick <laughs> and stuff. And Ben will also show what quick means in that sense uh, during our demo. But that, that's for later. Let's not steal this thunder for now. Um, uh, but 26 respondents this far has responded no. And I think that's really an honest response because it's very hard to know where your secrets are. So that's about the location of things in the context of secrets. But apparently there's more to this than just that, right? So um, can you tell us when your secret was last borrowed by um, an ex-colleague or an active colleague? You know, because some administrative tasks need to be done, or because he was, or he or she, or it was sacked, um, and try to uh, take a few items home to have different licenses, for instance. Um, we can all say that it never happens, but we all also know that this happens very often. Um, more importantly, can you also tell when the secret was not working anymore? So this we often can tell because then all of a sudden our service is outed, right? Because then the whole service goes down if it's integrated with some other service for which it needed a secret. Um, that is apparently not that hard. Um, unfortunately, we're often very much just too late because the audit started and we eventually find out that it was because the secret was no longer working. Hmm. And then there's this funny guy from Despicable Me um, that tries to present something for us as well on the slide. So let's assume we found out where our secrets are, which is great. We start monitoring them. We make an alert when, they, when they're grabbed, and then we log an entry that they are grabbed. Now the question is, do you log that correctly? Or do we end up having the, the data uh, of the given secret right in your audit log or in some other log where too many people have access to? Hmm. Okay. So apparently, secrets management is special. Um, by now, we know that many uh, of uh, the things that we present within NOAA's conferences are considered special, otherwise we'd be talking about it. But secrets management by itself, unfortunately, needs some attention. Um, and that is why we introduced uh, Project OWASP Wrong Secrets. All right, what is it? Tell me more. Let's go. Um, so uh, it's basically a vulnerable app uh, and a secret detector testbed. Uh, you'll see uh, when them demonstrate the app uh, in a larger portion how that works. And you can find in our readme how the secret detector uh, testbed works. What we basically did is uh, we have a bunch of challenges uh, where you need to find a secret within the code um, or within some other asset that we created for you, where some people mis have funny beliefs about that a secret over there is safe. Um, and next to that, the secret detector testbed basically um, has a few additional secrets inside Git, so you can let the your secret detector run through and see if it detects the things um, that are out there. But by that, you know how effective your secrets detector is and whether it's configured correctly. We have a few goals about this. So by now you understand we think secrets management is special. Um, so yeah, we would love to educate people on secret management and its pitfalls. And we would like to help people reflect on the secrets management strategy. So while you're doing these exercises in our vulnerable app, ask yourself, hey, are we doing something similar here? Or are we at risk doing something similar? Or have I seen somebody in my organization doing something similar? Should I improve my strategy? Um, and there, and of course, you know, try to promote secrets management as an important facet of security. Um, all of this could never have happened without the tremendous support of our volunteers. Um, so these are most of them. Some of them, we they didn't want to be mentioned, but still huge shout out to the anonymous uh, people helping us as well. Um, special thanks to Nana, Tibor, um, uh, Josh, Mike, and Jos, who did quite a lot of cool stuff to help us out. And special call out to Dave and Martin as our testers also helping us out a lot on other things. Um, and of course, um, uh, 
a special call out to Madhu uh, Kula, who has done a tremendous job on helping us to promote the project correctly, um, and Bjorn for being an inspiration with uh, many things he has already done for us for such a long time and helped us along the way with uh, uh, little tidbits. Having that said, and of course, huge shout out to Ben. <laughs> hey, Ben, <laughs> finally presenting this together. Apologies, gentlemen, for taking and ladies for taking your time on that one. So, um, okay, so what did we build with the volunteers? You might wonder by now, right? Let's have a look at our architecture. So, the vulnerable application is basically a Spring Boot application that um, uh, uh, sits in a Docker container. And a Docker container you can run on your desk uh, on your machine directly, but you can also just uh, uh, visit uh, our website in Heroku, which is uh, wrongsecrets.herokoapp.com, uh, which you can also find in the project README, uh, or we can load it as a pod and run it in a Kubernetes platform. Uh, right now we have scripts to support Minikube, AWS, uh, which is completely terraformed for you, so you can also tear it down correctly, uh, GCP and Azure. Um, as well as uh, uh, Minikube, actually, so you can also just run the Kubernetes exercises and the Vault exercise locally. And in every layer, we basically add more secrets. So if you just run the Docker container locally, you get a bunch of secrets. Uh, but if you want to uh, uh, enjoy the full flavor of it, use one of the cloud providers noted in this slide to have fun with it. Um, having that said, giving us a lot of space for um, Ben to... Uh, start showing some awesome demos over to you yes ben. well uh, thank you will do let me share my screen as well there we go all right um so you can find wrong secrets on github and like you also said on heroku and that's the easiest way to try it out in in a uh well easily. <laughs> um, please don't run any testing tools directly on Heroku. Um, there's not really any dynamic uh, challenges going on. So using things like OWASP SAP, well, while they may yield you some results, that's not really the goal of our challenge. And also uh, Heroku nodes, free Heroku nodes, don't really like it when you do that. So be gentle with it. You can, of course, uh, just walk through uh, all of the challenges that are supported by this environment. Uh, once you go to wrongsecrets.herokuapp.com, you'll be greeted with this screen. It's both available in a light and a dark mode. And then there's all the challenges listed below. We currently have 18. There are some more in the works on which I'll share later. Um, but there's, like you don't said, challenges at every layer here. And you'll also see that some challenges are disabled. So uh, depending on uh, the environment you're running in, you might might need to uh, do something else to get it working, or uh, we need to require some dependencies, etc. So of course, challenges for specific to a cloud environment don't work on uh, Heroku. So uh, those challenges will be grayed out for you. Now, this is all nicely responsive, or at least it should be. Uh, and you can even do some of this on your phone as well, if you so desire for some hacking on the go. What we also want to do, of course, is not only show you and teach you how things go wrong, but also point you in the direction of how you should do things. So not only have we included some resource on the homepage, uh, but when you actually go to a challenge, um, you can also look at hints, which will provide you with a step-by-step -step guidance on how to retrieve the secret. And um, for some of the challenges, we've actually had remarks, okay, um, I I'm doing this, but why is this a bad thing? <laughs> so we decided to also include a section on, on what's wrong in this approach. So speaking of uh, this challenge and, and what's wrong with a centralized hard-coded password. Uh, let's give it a go. So what's happening here? And the description gives us a brief primer. So 
people write a proof of concept, often start with a hard-coded secret, uh, for instance, uh, a password in code, um, but you may end up pushing your code to production and forgetting that you had still this hard-coded thing going on. So this is one of those things that would be very easy to detect, of course, if you have access to the source code. And uh, one of the easiest ways that's probably installed on, uh, well, nearly all machines uh, is, is grep. Um, so what we could do is just grep for password. And now if we do that on our repository, we'll get uh, a ton of results <laughs> uh, for, for different reasons. Hopefully you will have maybe only somewhat less meaningful results on your own projects. Um, let's see, but let's grab in the repo and see what comes up. So there's a lot of things here and uh, a lot of them are centered around documentation, of course, but there is also some interesting things that may be what we are looking for. I know uh, out of experience, of course, that it should be this one. So let's go ahead. Now I've already create, uh, completed this challenge in this session, but there we go. We found a centralized hard-coded password. And of course, for an open source application, this is especially bad. Uh, don't do this. Don't put your secret in code. Um, it gives entirely the entire world access to it and it's also quite hard to erase this from internet memory so everything that is behind this password uh, should be considered compromised um, the second it lands in github right let's go to a it's a different challenge that is related to docker in this case i wanted to say a somewhat more complicated challenge but i i wish <laughs> It's, it's, it's maybe even easier to figure out uh, uh, where this secret is. So um, going here, there's the Docker argument-based password. So you know maybe if you use Docker that um, you can provide command line arguments to set different things, uh, not necessarily hard coding them in the code, but you supply it, uh, a password, for instance, in the command line. And Thus, this password is now in your bash history, probably, uh, or you may have passed it in in a somewhat more sophisticated way and it's a bit harder to retrieve. But um, if you use Docker Armions, there's still ways to retrieve this thing quite easily. And um, we give a brief primer again on, on how this is done. So in this case, uh, we can easily spot what's happening by looking at how the layers are constructed. Now, if you put your image on Docker Hub, uh, there's this nice overview of the layers. And of course, there are different tools to dissect this. Um, but in this case, we don't even need to do anything special. We just go to Docker Hub and uh, go to wrong secrets. There we go. Look at that most recent one and uh, here we have this interesting command image layer 14 where there's this arc based password hello global appsec this is just a temporary password oopsie daisy so again this is public for all the world to see and you may for your own environment, uh, think of ways, even if the, this Docker image is private, that this is probably not a desirable thing to do, right? So let's go, that's it. All right. Um, now, one of my favorite challenges actually um, is more related to CI CD. We've had uh, the Docker container, we've had uh, the, the code. And um, another place to store secrets would be your CI platform. But of course, if you have a CI platform that stores secrets, then you also need to consider the access to that secrets. Um, and 
if you have, um, for instance, GitHub Actions, then GitHub Actions needs to interact with this secret in some way, um, maybe to access a cloud environment, for example. And if someone creates uh, a workflow that accidentally spits out the secret in the log, uh, or even uh, this might be a, a malicious thing going on where uh, it, it's, it's not some error accidentally logging it, um, it's, it's pretty easy to exfiltrate these things. So normally you may know that GitHub and other CI systems mask their secrets in the logs. So here we see a, a sample workflow in GitHub. And, and what's happening is that there's a bash script um, that loads in an environment variable where we have a secret, so the, the challenge 13 key. And um, it will just echo out the key. Um, and, and that will be masked. And then even if you encode it with base64 once, then it will probably still mask this output in the logs. But if you encode it twice or thrice, or you can go several layers deep, depending on what you need, then um, your mileage may vary, but you will probably end up with the secret. So running this command, first we have the, the plane output where we just load this thing. Um, and indeed, it seems like it's masked. And now there's the double encoded thing. And there we have a double encoded base64 secret. Now, if we go to our terminal and uh, decode that thing, we end up with this nicely random string, which we can put over here. And there we go. We have successfully exfiltrated a secret from GitHub and solved our challenge. So the final thing that I want to show you uh, is also still somewhat related to code, which is challenge 15. Say you have AOS access keys and uh, you accidentally hard coded them, but you were smart and removed them uh, again um, but only after you had already committed your secrets. So um, one thing we can do is use Trufflehog to detect secrets that are in, um, in the Git history. And for our projects, naturally, that yields a lot of results. <laughs> So uh, I, I had to get a bit funny with Trufflehog uh, and, and do specifically a grab for the thing we want. But you could just run Trufflehog 3 on our Git repository and then uh, grab for AWS. And there we go in a second or so. It's probably checking it out right now. Processing the results. There we go. So as you can see, there are some different entries related to secrets. And um, these secrets, they, uh, they, uh, are then again, like in code, easily exfiltrated. But there's a neat thing about this. So say these keys were not put in there accidentally, but rather on purpose, in the sense that once you use these, um, you know that someone has been going through your code and uh, uh, checking out whether there are any secrets. So, a canary token. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept, um, but what we could do uh, 
is check out one of these keys. Let me access key ID and then do this. Don't really care about the region, I think. And then do AWS STS get call or identity profile wrong secrets. And now in this case, uh, let's see, probably used the wrong one, did I? Configure. I didn't sacrifice and go to the demo god, sorry. There we go. Yes. So I used my canary token. Whoops. And now I've landed on a tripwire on which, uh, as a hacker, you would probably know by this stage that uh, your activity has now been, uh, yeah, is being monitored and is now being alerted on. So as a defender, as a builder, this is a useful thing to do to just leave canary tokens here and there. Um, if someone is rummaging through your code or whatever, um, and maybe even your, your local machine, leave one of these on your local machine as default AWS credentials, um, that if they are used, you know you are compromised. Now, we also have this uh, stats thing in our wrong secrets app. And um, this also shows us uh, a, a web token that's, uh, that's uh, again, a canary token. And it shows us what... Uh, Canary token will be received. And the last one, last entry was just shown. Uh, this is probably me then going to a specific URL. So that's a nice way for you to know that there, well, is an attacker maybe accessing your platform. And um, if this secret is located close to your other secrets, it's probably high time you start doing some incident response and maybe rotating secrets or closing access to some parts of your system to contain. Okay, that's it for this demo part. Um, let's progress. Now, we have... 18 challenges as of now, and we're also working on more, like I said. So what's on the roadmap? Now, first off, we probably want to improve the development experience a bit. Currently, it's, it's quite cumbersome to add a new challenge and go through the testing loop, go through the verification again. So we want to make this easier for everyone working on our project and, and, and implement a nicer development experience, for instance, with live reloading. We also want to do uh, some secrets management, yeah, secret hiding in, in binaries, for example. So hard coding something in code is one thing, but you could also hard code it in a binary. And then um, what would happen uh, is that it's still often quite easily detectable. Uh, and there's various degrees, of course, in which uh, this is easy to detect. You can go from a, some simple string to something that's obfuscated, et cetera. So that's another area that we are exploring. One thing to note is that all of these challenges that we have here are things that we've seen in the wild. So if there's any scenario um, that we discover, or you, hopefully you have seen something interesting as potential contributors, uh, you could flag it and, and say, okay, I, I've seen this interesting thing and uh, maybe it's a nice idea to make a challenge out of it. You're welcome to uh, do something for that yourself, of course, but you're also welcome, very welcome to just uh, post it as a potential challenge in an issue in our GitHub. Another thing we're working on is uh, like a multi-user CDF or CDFD support, uh, various UI improvements, um, we want to have wrong secrets 
additionally available as a secret detection test bed so that various secret detection tools can use it uh, as a sort of benchmark of how well they are at detecting things or uh, and how good they are at not detecting things that are false positives and there's much much more for that please check out our github at uh, commune slash wrong secrets slash issues as well so having said that back to you uh, all right Hi. sorry that was technically stuff not helping out thank you so much ben really awesome demo um so now you might ask yourself okay there's just tons of ways of how not to do it so how should we do it? <laughs> um, well, like Ben already mentioned, uh, use wrong secrets as a secret detection benchmark to find out if there's anything inside that, you, that, um, that you're not detecting yet in your pipelines. Um, and of course, um, make sure you're also prepared for having the detector actually run as a pre-commit hook instead of just in your pipeline, because hey, you rather want to find out whether something is violating before it hits Git and a lot of other places. So um, um, there's a bunch of resources we packed in, that, uh, in our uh, application, which you can visit, uh, like uh, a blog about secrets management, references to OpenSAM, um, which is also being, I thought, being presented this, uh, this uh, conference as well. An awesome talk you should check out. Um, and then, of course, the secret detection topic at GitHub, where you can find a lot of tools, other examples, and other resources you might want to jump into to find different out uh, and to learn off about secrets management. Then there's the Oval Secrets Management Cheat Sheet that is really recommended to have a read-through. Thank you so much, Germanico, for uh, governing that. And then there's the Open CRE project, where our project is integrated with, that the moment that you go over there, you basically find out all about secrets management in different uh, standards, like the ASVS and other things, so anything Oval pretty and other standards as well. By the way, um, this Friday, there will be an awesome presentation by Rob and Spiros uh, about OpenCRE. And if you're really done with scrolling through hundreds of resources and to Google your ass off every day, you should watch it and see how you can contribute to it because I think it's an awesome growth towards a better standard to interact with each other. All right. Um, so having that said, um, the next very next question would then be, I suppose, um, yeah, what can we take away from this? So if you're watching right now or watching this afterwards, this recording, what would be the takeaways from our project in general? Um, and of course, still, you know, try it out, give it a test and learn from it. But let's, let's have a look at the takeaways anyway. First of all, never hard code anywhere. That means anywhere in your configuration, whether it's the metadata of a binary or it's something else, anything really, um, uh, or in your cloud configuration or in... Um, um, uh, uh, in, uh, in your CICD pipeline in a way that you can't really rotate it anywhere where, you, where, where it can be yet, make sure it's not just hard coded and easily uh, uh, detected. And whether you're, you, you're an advanced technology user or not, make sure you don't trust the defaults because many of the platforms that we're using today to create software, to integrate it with our pipelines and to basically deploy it to production have a set of defaults that are mostly tailored at making sure you can start deploying ASAP so that you have a few lines of code and you magically have an application that can do stuff. Of course, it's not magic. It's depending on a lot of configuration defaults. And those defaults might actually hamper you if it comes to secrets management. Rotate secrets often. And if you can, use ephemeral secrets, where the secret generation and deletion basically shows an intent to use a certain service, but that the secret will only be there for as long as you have basically used that service for a given request. Um, reduce the blast radius of your secret. So if a secret is somewhere somewhat hard-coded or if a secret is easy detectable within your infrastructure or somewhere else, make sure that the secret is not an almighty password to your complete cloud environment and anything else you possibly could attend to. Make sure that that given secret is then only allowing the service consuming it to do exactly what it needs, no extra rights or whatsoever. And make sure you reduce exposure. You don't have to... So the easy thing everybody would think of is, okay, let's make sure all of our you know, company repositories aren't public, but maybe we should go a few steps further and thinking of, hey, do really everybody in the organization need to have access to all the assets within the organization? Or can we tailor it down a little bit? 
Similarly, should we have maybe policies in our secrets management solution to make sure that some people can access some of the secrets they require, but in most cases, possibly nobody needs access and it's just a computer thing. You'll need to see the main, the main data of a secret. Um, and have logging and alerting in place. Not like the guy from uh, the little Disney movie, um, but make sure you really can tell uh, when a secret is being accessed. And more importantly, make sure you're able to tell from the uh, uh, resource that is basically uh, used as the place where you authenticate to with the secret or the place that would basically generate materials with the secret that um, um, that really shows logging and alerting to see like, hey, where is the secrets uh, consumer coming from? Is that from the place it's supposed to be or is it somewhere completely different? Um, having that said, um, we can really use your help. Um, so if you want to uh, have a drive of our, uh, of our project, promote it if you can, give feedback whether through OWASP Slack or Project Wrong Secrets um, and try to improve the project with, uh, with PRs if you feel like, hey, this is something I can do. I would love to contribute a little bit. Um, and of course, we'll list you as one of our contributors then as, uh, uh, um, and promote you in any of our sessions. And that sort of concludes our session a little bit earlier than expected. So we still have a little bit of time left. Are there any questions? I think uh, there are no questions so far from the audience. And it was really uh, amazing and wonderful session from you guys because you have covered all the aspects of uh, from the attacker's point of view and to the defender's side, how to, um, how to find the secrets and how to secure the secrets to reduce the attack surface. And the major key takeaways from this session is like uh, we should not uh, store the uh, secrets hard, in a hard-coded way to reduce the attack surface and always keep logging and alerting in place. Very insightful and very great session. Thank you so much again. Yeah, I do have some questions. So what is your favorite challenge of the project and why? You want to start to doing? The... Yeah, sure. So my favorite challenge is, let me share my screen on that one secrets um, is I think uh, sorry is 14 so 14 is special to me because when I try to explain our project to a friend of mine who is a driving instructor so it has nothing to do with IT he was like hey isn't this the same as my colleague who just has one two three four as his password to his password manager and it has all these awesome passwords inside but it's just one two three four and I felt like that's stupid. Why would you do that? And we figured that is awesome. That needs to be a challenge. And this challenge basically shows that secrets management is not just some corporate infosec thing or whatever, or, or a unicorn, let's do this right type of thing. But it's in our daily lives, um, in every person that needs to, you know, secure access to whatever services he or she is using, uh, you end up... Um, having to protect your secrets. So, so this is, to me, is one of the most awesome challenges uh, um, because it has a beautiful story behind it. Thank you for answering the question. So the next question from my end is like, like uh, it is awesome to hear that you're running a multi-cloud application, but what was your experience uh, with building this application for multiple environments? Right, yeah. Um, I, having built all three of the, the cloud environments, um, or well, three of the major public clouds, I should say, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite painful to, um, to do this, even though we were using Kubernetes and theoretically that's something that's quite portable, right? You go from, from one to, uh, to the other, um, but. Uh, there are always implementation details associated with a specific cloud and especially learning Azure, for example, and, and how that interacts with our an environment was uh, quite a pain. <laughs> um, not even going into the updates and say, uh, there's some lifecycle management update, you have to upgrade a major Kubernetes version, and then that's different per cloud as well. So um, there are quite some things um that are yeah painful in in maintaining three separate clouds and i think it's it's really good to 
keep a bit of focus if you want to do things well <laughs> um, before you go multi-cloud. Um, and there's a lot, actually, because of this, there are some challenges in there uh, specific to some of the clouds um, that are pitfalls. Um, and, and if you want to do things in a generic way, like put things in Ter Terraform and, and put things in a Terraform state, for example, uh, you might end up with a secret in Terraform state. And, and that's also um, one of the things that we then highlighted as a challenge um, uh, so that you can learn from that. Okay, thanks for answering this question. Uh, one more question from the audience. Is it live project? Could we expect uh, new challenges to pop up in the future? So I'll, I'll take this one. So um, yes, it's a very live project. We have releases almost every two weeks. At least that's what we attend to, whether it's maintenance releases because uh, GitHub is telling us that our resources are outdated again and to make sure you can use this, we are updating it uh, on a regular basis. Um, we this morning just announced the upcoming of the first binary search challenges, and I don't mean binary search tree like algorithmic fun stuff, but you know, um, reverse engineer binaries to find the secrets inside, which will start with releasing a C level, a C based challenge, then C, Golang, Rust, and maybe even Swift. So we can virtually show it doesn't matter which language you use or how you go to machine code, um, <laughs> you'll end up in trouble basically. <laughs> Um, so that's that's one list. Um, similarly, um, uh, uh, there is a few challenges being worked on by a few volunteers already, um, which are assigned issues. Um, and we have started some of the preparations for CTFD, which is going relatively slow because there's a lot of integration. We need to make sure that it will work properly. Um, and the test bed is continuously extending. And we already hooked up with one of the organizations that publicly said, hey, we're that's Git Guardian. And Git Guardian, if you're watching this, thank you so much for your support and shout out in your blog. And we basically said we are becoming OWASP member because of one of the, this and a few other things. Um, we are in touch with them to make sure that we add more and more secrets. And we hope that other security or secrets vendors will follow um, to, you know, uh, test their stuff at the test bed and at the same time we're extending it continuously so not just challenges but also uh, secrets hidden in one branch to see if you can basically find them yeah awesome to hear that and the last question the project shows mostly what is not a good idea in terms of handling secrets can you share a few good ideas as well for the same sure sure um uh So, um, uh, so um, uh, there's a few things. So, of course, there were the takeaways, right? Let's 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 quickly dive into those so that we can easily still see them. Um, so, uh, these are the basic takeaways. As in, never hard code if you don't have to. Don't trust defaults of the platforms. Make sure you rotate or use ephemeral secrets. Um, and once you start thinking about rotation ephemeral secrets, you automatically end up with one of the more major secret management platforms that are designed to do this well. Um, which can be any of the known vault projects, basically. Um, um, of course, reducing the blast radius of the secret, which means actually not specifically handle secrets management, but really reconsider your identity and access management strategy. So um, not one account to rule them all, but multiple accounts for different reasons. Um, and good luck with managing those. Um, and of course, um, uh, the logging and alerting is something that is often very important. What we often see in the wild uh, uh, is that um, um, uh, teams often say like, hey, we're never hacked or um, uh, we sure our secrets are secure, but there's no law showing when, when a secret has been used for authentication, for instance, or when some resource that can only be accessed after the secrets is being used, that, that, that the access to that given resource is being locked. So um, make sure you get your logging and alerting in place, not just about from your secrets management tool, but also on those ends uh, where uh, we basically um, uh, uh, are waiting for the secrets to land in order to be able to do actionable items. So in that sense, yeah, um, that's uh, um, that's uh, um, uh, that can be very valuable. Um, and the other thing really is the resources we showed earlier, um, and those resources still need to be extended a bit. And that will be. Let me see if I can quickly pop that up. Um, 
that will be basically going over these resources where the open theory uh, link can be really recommended because then you get tons of resources from the asvs and other things in terms of actionable items that can really help you as well as a secret management cheat sheet that more verbally tries to explain what you should do or shouldn't do in situations with the ci cd and stuff like that i'm definitely gonna have a look for the resources and thanks for the amazing session and the wonderful session I really appreciate the session and yeah, so I think we are over and that's okay. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Bye bye.